Until my senior year of high school, my goal was to become a professional violinist. I'd spent the previous 12 years practicing daily and driving hours each week for orchestra rehearsal and private lessons. My parents had always been supportive of my musical aspirations, but one is a doctor and the other an engineer, so eventually they convinced me to pursue a more practical career path. So that fall when I started university, I had no idea what I wanted to study. I'd always been interested in space and physics, so when one of my professors told us about his research with the LIGO collaboration using giant lasers to detect black holes smashing together in the distant reaches of the universe, I thought that sounded pretty cool. So that summer, I found myself here in Australia at Monash University in Melbourne conducting research with the very same collaboration. I may not have ended up a professional violinist, but in a way, I still study music. My research focuses on the search for a gravitational wave background, the Cosmic Symphony. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, a pair of black holes spiraled together, locked in a violent death dance until they eventually got close enough to merge, releasing the energy of three suns in the form of gravitational waves. These waves are ripples in the fabric of space-time, first predicted by Albert Einstein 100 years ago, when he revolutionized our understanding of gravity with his theory of general relativity. At this point, Newton had already discovered that all massive objects are attracted to each other via the force of gravity, but it was Einstein who finally explained how gravity works. It's the very fabric that holds the whole universe together. Gravitational waves arise from the violent acceleration of extremely massive objects because space-time warps in their presence. Imagine how a trampoline sags under the weight of a jumping gymnast. This is the same thing that happens to the fabric of space-time, except a single gymnast wouldn't even make a dent. It takes an extremely dense, compact astrophysical object, like a merging pair of black holes, to disturb space-time enough that we'd be able to pick up a signal here on Earth. A few short months after I joined the LIGO collaboration, the gravitational waves from that binary black hole merger reached Earth for the very first time and were picked up by the LIGO detector. This first direct detection of gravitational waves is so exciting because now we have a new window onto the universe. Up until now, astronomers have only been able to probe the cosmos using light. But the earliest picture that we've taken with telescopes is from about 400,000 years after the Big Bang. And this is because before this time, all the matter in the universe existed as an opaque plasma, like a foggy window that our telescopes just can't see past. But gravitational waves pass through everything, so we can use them to listen farther back into our cosmic history than ever before. Now, I say listen, but gravitational waves aren't sound waves. We can, however, translate the gravitational wave signal into a sound clip. So for a merging pair of black holes, it actually sounds something like a chirp. And the pitch and the duration of the chirp depend on the properties of the black hole, like their masses. For the first time, our movie of the universe has not only a picture, but sound as well. And in this way, gravitational waves are the music of the cosmos. Now, the gravitational wave background is the cosmic symphony, the orchestral accompaniment to the binary black hole mergers that we've already seen so clearly in the detector. And it sounds something like static. <laughs> But why should we even bother listening to this cosmic static if we can hear the individual detections so clearly? What new information can we gain by listening to the background that we can't get from the individual detections? Well, not all instruments are created equal, and neither are all black holes. Viola and tuba, for example, don't have a lot of solo repertoire compared to violin and piano. Even if you're a frequent concert goer and you don't discriminate between instruments, you would have to go to a lot of solo concerts before you ever heard of viola or tuba. And maybe you knew these instruments existed theoretically, but until you hear them for the first time, you have no proof and you don't know what they sound like. If you go to a symphony concert, however, 
You might not distinguish them at first, but the longer and more carefully you listen, the more instruments you can pick out. You can learn about the whole orchestra in one concert. Similarly, by studying the gravitational wave background, we can learn about the whole universe. The black holes that we can detect individually are the ones that are the most massive and the closest to us, and they have different properties than the black holes that contribute to the background from the distant universe. So the sources of the, of the gravitational wave background are both cosmological and astrophysical. So we'll explain this difference both visually and orally. To start off, let's imagine unperturbed space-time as the surface of a still lake. Our loud binary black hole soloist is like a rock being thrown into the lake that produces a distinct ripple pattern. The cosmological gravitational wave background, which comes from early universe processes, like the violent expansion immediately following the Big Bang. This is like a wind blowing across the surface of the lake. The ripples produced are much more random than the concentric circles from the rock, and they cover the whole surface. Now let's imagine that it starts raining. This is the astrophysical background of unresolvable binary black hole mergers that are too small or too distant to detect individually. These ripples overlap to produce a persistent hum in the detector that drowns out the cosmological background, but isn't loud enough to drown out the individual detections. And this distinction is important because we actually measure the two types of backgrounds in different ways. We do expect to be able to detect an astrophysical background with our current instruments, but because the cosmological background is much weaker, it will take more advanced technology before we hope to be able to see this signature of the early universe. Now, maybe the rain is only coming in from one direction, so the ripples from the raindrops are only centered on one half of the lake. This is what it would look like if all the binary black hole mergers were clustered in a small region of space. Eventually, as the rain picks up, the ripples cover the whole lake, and it's hard to tell that the wind is blowing. But if you throw a big enough rock, you'll still be able to distinguish that distinct ripple pattern. Now let's add some music to our mental picture of the background. You've just arrived in our cosmic concert hall, and you're the first one there, so all you can hear is the hum of the stage lights. This is the cosmological gravitational wave background. It sounds the same in all directions and for the entire time that you're in the hall. Now the orchestral musicians start trickling in to warm up. The first ones to arrive are a couple of violinists. What can I say? We are the overachievers. <laughs> and they're each only playing in short bursts at a time. The duration of the bursts is shorter than the time between the individual bursts. And you can tell that the sound is coming preferentially from the side of the stage with the violins. This is the early astrophysical background, the first raindrops on our lake. Eventually, as the rest of the musicians arrive, all you can hear is a loud atonal cluster of sound that sounds the same in all directions on the stage. You can't really hear the hum of the lights anymore, but once the binary black hole soloist arrives, it becomes harder to distinguish the nuances of the orchestral accompaniment, but it still plays an important role in our cosmic soundscape. By studying the gravitational wave background, not only can we learn about black holes at different distances formed in different epochs, we will also one day be able to learn about the very origin of the universe. Maybe the hum of the lights in the hall doesn't seem so interesting compared to the music being played on stage, but that hum teaches us about the properties of the building. And without the building, there would be no concert at all. Using the cosmological gravitational wave background, we'll finally be able to break past that foggy window and probe the opaque plasma of the early universe where physics as we know it breaks down. While it won't be detectable with current instruments, Learning to listen to the astrophysical background that we can see now will help prepare us to listen farther back into our cosmic history than ever before. Using gravitational waves, we'll be able to hear the first song of the cosmos, bringing us one step closer to finally answering that question, where do we come from? <laughs>